what was the toughest driving when you commit to a horse? What was your toughest decision to make? Whether it was a, you know, because a lot of times coming into their three-year-old year or an open horse, what was, yeah. the, what was the toughest decision you had to make and did it work out? Well, you just, uh, I didn't get the opportunities that these guys got because I uh, had my own horses and everything too. But, you know, your biggest thing is you don't want to make a mistake. You want to pick the right one, although sometimes you, you don't, you know. you just gotta Was there a the horse mistake. that, because you had your own, you couldn't take? And you were like, oh, even though that horse is probably better than my own, I still got to drive my own? Well, the, the closest I could come to that was Amity Sheft when he went to Rosecroft Raceway to race. Blair Burgess asked me if I'd go down, and I and I had a couple of my own in that night at Meadowlands. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Blair, you go with them, and I'll go with them next week, you know. And then uh, John was down there that night, and he'd get on, the rest was history. And that's it. Yes. So, now what, what about you? What was your toughest uh, one? McLobel. McLobel. I raced him his first eight starts, and elimination for the Peter Houghton. I raced Mac and I raced Sir Taurus. Okay. And I picked her to Sir Taurus. You Sir Taurus. And, but you know what? And I never had any qualms about that mm -hmm. because a lot of the people that owned Mac were, were also involved with Annihilator, but there were some new people that weren't. I never felt they wanted me to drive them anyway. So I, okay. I never I, I never like nobody does. You can't do good with a horse that people don't want you driving, so you may as well just move on. And, and I did. So. And just move on from there. So, yeah. And Sir Taurus, I mean, he. He was okay. He's yeah. a two-year-old, three-year-old. He was second to Mac in the yeah. in the Yonkers trot, but he was no Mac Bell for right. sure. Well, I and think there's like three horses that could maybe be in that company. And Mac Bell was no Mac Bell then either. I mean, he was a young horse coming along. Sure. He had lots of talent, but it, he he was. Uh, and I, I would imagine uh, you guys see as a two-year-old plenty of that, lots of talent. Yeah. But yeah. but you never can project. I mean, how many horses realistically can we project as a two-year-old? Be like. Yeah, they're going to be one of yeah. the best horses of all time. Yeah. You, yeah. I think it's less now than it was then. And yeah. then I think you had a pretty good handle on it, right, oh, Bill? I think so, yeah. As a two-year-old. Nowadays, they just come from anywhere. Come and they go so fast, they burn out so quick, you know. And you might have won to win four or five races as a two-year-old and say, wait till next year. And then he comes out next year and he's nowhere. And then know? how many times have we seen a three-year-old yeah. who did nothing at two yeah. yes. come along and yes. boom, they, they just, yeah. did, you know. And you can go on each year. Yes. Each horse, yeah. same thing, right? Flop out of nowhere, right? Which makes horses like McWicked, uh, you know, yeah. and, and Bold Eagle that, that's here. I mean, they're just doing it year after year after year, and you're yeah. like, you know. It, it, do you think it's more important? Like, okay, we had uh, we had Lather up this year. Mm. You know, he, I, he did great as a, as a three-year-old and, yeah. and won some races. He won the North America Cup, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And But it, it's a shame that we only got, you know, a small uh, period. But the horse is wicked fast. Yes. And Mickey, too. Let's yeah. be realistic. We'll yeah. Always be Mickey. Yeah. It was just a... Tiny, tiny year. So, which do you guys prefer? A horse like McWicked that year after year is there and wins and is there, or do you prefer a wicked fast burst where this horse captures everybody for, you know, a couple races here and there or longevity for me? I mean, you like longevity? No, no think, sex, please. Yeah. And, you know, horses like that stand together, McWicked, and you can name yeah. a lot of. I think the same if you look back to Speedy Crown. Howard Beisinger had him, and he just got better every year he raced. He raced yeah. right up until he was four or five, I guess it was. And, you know, if, if you look at it from a sire's project, er, perspective, I think that uh, I would rather see a horse that raced really good for two or three years and just come out as a average two-year-old and a flash three-year-old. Yeah. If I was going to breed to him, you know, I would rather see a horse that just kept getting better. Oh, you mean from the breeding side? Yes. Like if you if you're buying a yearling from them, yes. you want you want yeah. longevity. Yes. The albatross the same way. Right? Yes, exactly. Four year old, he was a little peanut, and he just you think, yeah, oh, wait till he wait till the rest of them grow up, and he doesn't. Well, he just kept yeah. eating them week after week. Did you guys have a favorite uh, sire that you liked driving? Yes. Like like you were like, okay, if I'm gonna, t I don't take chapter seven. Like, all right, if I'm gonna get on a chapter seven, like I know. I like I like all these ones to drive. Most happy fellow. Most happy fellow. When I went to the Meadowlands, I had eight horses. I had six most happy fellows, and I had uh, two other breeds of horses. Okay. In in, in, in any time, I remember there was a claimer. A guy brought a claimer up from Liberty Bell, and I I made out the claim stuff, give it to Merle, guy that worked for me. He said, "Watch the horse warm up and put the claim in." I'm busy. I was using like the fourth race, so Merle comes down and he goes, "I don't know if we want him." I said, "Why?" I said, "He said he's got." Big ankles on. We got brace bands on. He's got spreaders. So I go, we got spreaders, don't we? So yeah, go get them. So we needed a horse. So anyway, the guy comes up and he finished second. So I was there afterwards, and the guy's taking the brace bands off. He had sponges in there, <laughs> and the spreaders. 
I go, where's the spreaders? Uh, we just hung them there. Yeah. He said he didn't wear them anywhere. So he, I claimed him for 20. He was a 50 claimer. You no, know, he'd never raced at the Metal Ends in the big track he'd sure. before. And Ron, what about you? I don't think it was any just certain breed I stuck to. I, you know, as, as far as buying them, training them, or even driving them, just uh, you, individuals, the one you wanted for, the one that would fight and showed some speed, you know. Okay. Was there, a, what, what was your um, horse that you trained? What, what was your... What was your best horse? Was it no sex? Pl Did you have that horse as a, a no, no, no. So you bought him as an aged horse? No, or? Junior, my son, he bought him as a yearling. Okay, I think he gave fifteen thousand for him if I remember right, and he deserves a world of pat in the backs because he he handled that horse great his whole career. Did you help with that horse training, or you just left that up to him? I just left that up to him. He just was good enough to let me get on and drive. Was that tough? I mean, you know, you're 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 the dad. You're used to being the authority, and you just have to let him do no, his job. I, I thought he was doing a pretty good job. The place that I found it was tough when I went all the way over to Sweden to drive him in the elite lop and screwed up, and that that was tough on me. That was I just I still think of that race. <laughs> okay. Oh, what what happened there? Was it? Did you was did he make the final? No, I drove like an idiot. You drove? How, yeah. how so? Let me see if I can pull that up. What, what, <laughs> well, he, he got locked in, never got out. I could have moved him for the, the quarter pole. Piece he wants to throw yeah, yeah. Ron, <laughs> let's see. Ron Waples <laughs> screws up. Yeah. At, oh, wow. Look. That wasn't the only time. There's a lot of other times, too. All right, so t tell me what uh, what was the experience like going over there? Oh, I thought it was great. I mean, there's another place that put on a show that you wouldn't believe, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, when John went over to race Mac LaBelle in it there, I said, you know, John, you've you've won a lot of big races because he'd never been over there and I'd been there twice and I said you've won a lot of big races and, and very exciting ones but when they post parade you in the back of a, a Corvette car yeah. convertible with a flag hanging yeah. over your shoulder and the yeah. crowd goes crazy I mean that'll that'll bring that tears gets, that, to your eyes. Yeah that yes. gets you happy. Yes. So you had been over there just as a fan or to race? No the first time I went over there I drove Holy Arnie for Houghton I was just going over for a vacation and, and they called and asked if I'd drive the horse they want somebody from North America driving the horse. Okay. But he was, uh, he should never have been there, really. Okay. You know, and then the second time, I I'd, I'd, was over there, I was there the year Meadow Road won it. I didn't drive in that year either. <clears throat> so, uh, no sex, please, was your best chance to, yeah, and you just yeah, got locked in? Yeah, locked in. I could have moved him for the quarter pool, and I didn't. And you didn't. And it, I mean, we've, we're going to experience this with Bold Eagle. Oh, yes. You know, a lot of the horses, they live on the outside over there. Yeah. Whereas we, us, you know, we're not used to being yeah. uh, locked in and, and, and things like that. We're out moving, and so it's that was a, that was yeah. I had somebody babysitting me right from before the quarter to the oh. mile was over. You just know? sitting right just sitting right, right outside there, of you. Yeah. yeah, that's what they do too. I mean, even yeah. if you're moving back to front, they wouldn't let you anymore. No, no, they just march have, on. They don't even yeah. look over their shoulder until everybody's lined up. Right, he's going to have to move before the quarter and sit first over. So yeah, that's, that's what I have to do, exactly. and I didn't want to do that. Give me your, how, uh, how is Bold Eagle going to win this race on uh, on Saturday night? Go faster than the rest. Go faster than the rest. Yeah. And he's proven it. I mean, yeah. he only raced two times on a mile, and he yeah. set damn near world records yeah. uh, doing it. So I think he'd be tough to beat. Now, may I ask, can he get beat? Yeah, of course he can get beat, but I think he'd be tough to get beat. Big horse, isn't he? Well, most I didn't see him. I just saw him over the stall. I mean, he's a, he's a, a good-looking stallion. Yeah. You know, he he yeah. just is, he just goes right. Yeah, he, he doesn't hit anywhere. He's just exactly what you'd want out of a trotter. I he seen, puts his head low and I've just. Seen the picture of him there on Standard Bread Canada. He gets one picture of my God. He's a great gated. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's what he's I mean. Perfect and gated, just, and he's just got a great yeah. attitude. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's this, a ready cash, right? Yeah, he's quite ready cash. Yeah, he was the same way. Yeah. Now he, you know, when I was the year that he won, I was over there in France, and, and they, he was nuts. They'd bring him out and have. Another horse just had a schooling number on. They yeah. must have probably from the same stable. They keep him right on his back. Okay. To to jog him, and then they come out after the next race and go a mile with him, turn him. And then the post parade, they did the same thing. That they just stay right on his stay right, right on, on somebody's back. back until they went in the little alcove there, and then they always wanted the outside with them for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. They they fight for position there, right? I mean, yeah. they go around circles, and they they didn't care. They just stood there and they just take him out and give him the outside, which was ten or something. Right. right. It didn't matter. What's what's been your experience overseas? I just raced uh, Sweden twice. I was over there okay. with Amber Keepsake. Had the seven hole, made a break in, in the in the first turn. I should get run into a guy squeezed his way in front of me. They didn't, they didn't have, <laughs> took you they, out. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So uh, they find me for being off the gate because she she uh, he couldn't put her on the gate, and she had 
you know, you're one hit pole, and she wore two poles, two birds, you know, we're one plane, right? So, uh, what do you call him? Uh, Oli Goop said, don't race it, I'll, uh, he said, I'll get you up to the gate, just follow me. So I had the eight hole, I guess, so anyway, because she'd run out the gate, Chuckie said, keep it away from the gate. So I followed him, and then by the time you get around the corner of the gate, yeah, they're gone. Like, yeah, they find me. 1500 krona, whatever that is, I have no idea, 100 bucks or something. Right. So I told the guy, I'll pay you next time I come back. They said, okay, so that was... So you're still suspended. <laughs> so you're still suspended. I went last, two years, two years ago, was it, or three years ago? With, 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 with interest, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. 7,000 US. <laughs> well, when they called us to go there, the driver said, check and see if I'm still on yeah. the list. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. so they said, nah, that's gone, so anyway. So have you guys driven any in France? No, no, no just Sweden. Yeah, yeah, my claim to fame for Sweden is uh, it's supposed to have been area. They told me that after I did, I was the first guy to win with a cold blood over there. First guy from North America oh, to win with okay. a cold blood. Okay. And they're the best way to describe them. They're halfway between a standard bread and a riding horse. Yeah. And very ignorant to drive. I found them. I guess they're much better now. But just pull your arms out, and if you give one just a little bit of slack, he's on the gallop. You know, yeah. they're just terrible things to drive. That's the second biggest race of the day, you know. Which race? The Cold Road? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the Monty racing, the yes. saddle. Yes. No, I mean in Sweden. In Sweden. Oh, not over there. Yeah. No, the Monty races? Yeah. In the, France, yeah. To me, you can watch paint drive. It'd be the same thing, right? But they uh, they have a lot of those. Yeah. And, and the guys like Nuvard. Yeah. He, he's they a all, champion guy. They all do it, yeah. yeah. But they, other than like the Prix de Marie, which was a great race, and then they had a couple, every race was 300,000 to a million that, that day. Even the Monty races are yep. all finals. The, the last couple of races that day, I went down to see Jerry Reed and watch the races from the, the you know the tarmac. It was like a number of two in October here, young trotters. I mean, they were horrible yeah. compared to the money they go for. Yeah, yeah. And they were going yeah. for three hundred thousand a whack. Well, and they they, don't, they don't race as much. No, you know, no, like like years. again, Bold Eagles last start was a month ago. Yeah, and it's it seems to be okay. Yeah. like like they're not stressing. Whereas over here, I mean, we just had Nancy talking about um, her two-year-old, uh, a tall, dark stranger. Yeah. She gave up a buy to race mm -hmm. just to get a race in. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she finished second, second. or third, second, second or third. So, I mean, that's just the difference in the, the mentality. horses. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if it's a mentality, <coughs> but just the, the they're okay with racing once a month, yeah. you know. Yeah, and they're they have, ready to go. Boy, and and they're ready to go. But they train them every other day. See how they do that? Yeah. That's wild. They don't jog anymore, those guys yeah. over there. They, Some of them go a mile every day with them. Yeah, and they, they go, day. they have all well, the trails. Well, Redden's, we were at Redden's farm, and uh, Stiggy Johansson's farm, and they had a bunch of two-year-olds, had eight of them at Stiggy's, and they're, and they're going five quarters, maybe, or six quarters, whatever they have a strip, right? They go down slow and back and back and back and back. And by the time they went to whatever the last one was, I saw them, it was this little black fellow there, had a white face. He couldn't make the hill. I mean, the guy, he was so tired. He would just got huffing and puffing. And, and Eric said, he said, that one won't be around long. No. <laughs> he just can't, he don't have the capacity to, to be an athlete, really, right? So the, the, this year, we have, I think it's two main events. It's McWicked, mm -hmm. you know, and Bold Eagle. Yeah. McWicked, I mean, both of them have over five million in earnings when you do the conversions and, and whatever else. And McWicked's a, a two-time champ. Bold Eagle, obviously, all his accolades, multiple pre damerique and all that stuff like that. So those are the two, I'd say, main horses. You know, we have Better's Wish and we have Green Shoe and we have all these great horses that have yeah. just, sure. you know, yeah. Green mm -hmm. Shoe, Sharton, yeah, that have captured, you know, Sharton's actually a good one where I think she's the third main event, but she also, too, hasn't had as much competition. I think um, she's going to get beat. You do? Okay. Caviar Alley? Or my candy girl. Oh, okay. Okay. She your race last. Oh, uh, she was in the. Oh, she had a prep, right? She had a prep against the boys, the which open, you don't see. In the open, open pace. Used yeah. her leaving down by the wire. He's just looking for room. She's yeah. just like that. Yeah, right. 26, I didn't see 25 and four, I think. Right? Yeah, it was. A, she was pretty impressive. It was a pretty impressive. She was really impressive. Her first couple of starts here until she she clunked her in there in the in the Milton, right? Yeah. She, and she was impressive. Out of all the years in the Breeders' Crowns, which do you think um, is the most important division to have? the main event? Like, is it the open trot because it's so international? Is it the open pace because three we've... Three-year-old pace. Three-year-old pace. Yeah, so when the three-year-old pace is the most competitive or when we have a horse like Sun Beach? 
Mm, more competitive, like this, okay. week, like this year. This year this is, year. is, is I mean, open. Better's Wish, yeah. Captain Crunch, yeah. uh, Dance and Lou, uh, yeah. Best in Show, South Ozzy, each one of those have won a major race. Yeah. yeah. That's so, so you think that that race, when that is the healthiest, that's the best race for the Breeders' Crown? For the British Crown, I don't think the best race overall. I like the age pacers and the okay. age trotters myself. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, I can only speak for myself on this, but when I got in the industry, you, you, first thing you thought about is who's going to win the little brown jug, mm -hmm. and that's three-year-olds. Yeah. So I think our mindset sure. has always been zeroed into the three-year-olds, right. yeah. and that's why I think it, it follows suit of the Breeders' Crown, and and maybe that's why. For myself, I like the, the trotters, the age or three or four-year-old trotters, whatever. I love the trotters. I love watching them go, and because they're all gated different, and they all some are better than others, and I just really love watching them races. Do you think uh, we had last year? We had was it last year? I think it was last year. Lazarus. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had open trotters, uh, Commander Crow, come over here and, and win. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple years he raced here, a couple yeah. years, and now we've got Bold Eagle. And we've had horses come over who were superstars and they've raced in the mm -hmm. Breeders' Crown. Um, but we really only had one pacer, right, to come. And it can only come from New Zealand, really. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that's, uh, it's just so tough on them to, to make the transition? Or how do we get more of the international horses? See, they're well over there. It's, it's reversed too. Right, it different spring, season. Right, they're they're probably not even racing those horses right now. That that cat caliber horse, right? But Lazarus wasn't a it wasn't a real good example. He'd been raced a long time, hard, yeah, hard. And then someone said on Facebook, if if he leaves Purdy's and does good, he'd be the first one. So he <laughs> must be a pretty good trainer, that guy. Right? Yeah. So because he'd sold multiple horses oh, yeah. over the years, right? They never really did as good as. Well, like just it's just tough. I mean, maybe it's a little easier to come from Europe. It's not that, but but it's a totally different season, totally it's different. It's, it's, it's so hours, it's so yeah. tough to just transition, and, and it's a shame that we can't embrace as a as a worldwide mm -hmm. kind of kind of thing. But you you think that the when the three year old cult pacers, when they're at their best, that's the best for the Breeders' Crown. I do personally, yeah. Because yeah, I, I think I think you're. It's it depends on the individual, yeah. like what you want to watch. You know, I think trotters for me because they're so tougher to get a good one mm -hmm. when you do get a good one I mean they're poetry in motion in yeah. my mind you know where a pacer nowadays you take a you buy them at the sale you bring them home take them off the truck two days later you can go a quarter and 40 seconds I was gonna say they can, they can pace they're natural. 20 out of the they're world. natural yeah. you know yeah. where, where 20 30 years ago I mean it took you three weeks to get the things gated if mm -hmm. you even got them gated you know and that's that's I mean, the breeders the breeders farms also yes. I think they put a little bit more effort into oh, uh, yes. preparing sure. them oh, yes. which yeah. is nice yes, because I mean, we've all broken horses that are yeah you like they, does, does this thing even have a, a lead on yeah you know it's yeah. never even had a halter on oh, yeah. when you should buy them in Ohio when I worked for Webby's you go get them on the field oh yeah you get a strap <laughs> on them <laughs> this long the old lasso right wrap them around <laughs> the neck yeah. all right let's go boy and then we go home and we had to go to Houghton Maine and take them off their truck at, yeah at, the board of you front try to get them up back on that truck the old three horse truck yeah. you know the ramp was like that and he had a ramp there in the old birmingham but uh, try that and then go uh, god forbid they ever say take him off at the, at the border you yeah. there for a week trying yeah. to get oh him yeah yeah trying to yeah. trying to go yeah. through customs yeah yeah but anyway they uh, yeah the teacher's bet he, he never had never saw a man mm -hmm. and he, he reached for a strap and he'd strike again but he ended up being a good horse but yeah and they you know once everybody got the jogging machines it made a big difference oh, in the right yeah. they, yeah. they put them on that every other day for six weeks or something and look at the seal streets like they just here up here I mean, oh, they, yeah. if but, they were in kentucky they'd be just another mm -hmm. yeah but here they just shine but, but you know you know I, I don't know everybody else does it different i guess but what i did the last few years with we had brood mares there and and my biggest thing was if when you had the mare in full you know, you, you could leave the mare for the first couple of weeks and the foal will follow. Right. Yeah. Then after that, the foal ain't going to follow. Yeah. So then why not reverse this? Well, let's lead the foal. Yeah. He's yeah. learning the, to the lead. The mare will follow. Yeah. And the mare will always follow. Yeah. You know? So then your, your, your foal, you, that right when he's five days old, you're yeah. starting to train him yeah. as far as leading and stopping and starting. And so I, I think that's a, a big thing that they're, they're handled so much more yeah. now than they used to be 100 years ago, you know? So and I think that's what may, adds to their natural ability too really all right so let's let's wrap this thing up i know we were gonna watch races and do this and we yeah. get sidetracked but that's okay you know yeah. we we don't have to it's plenty of plenty uh, years lots of races to watch. lots of races yeah. to watch uh this year's is it important for half the field to be canadian winners 
or does that not necessarily matter just because we're here in Canada? Well, important to the Canadians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the host the more, the more uh, yeah, and the same thing if you're in New Jersey, the more horses from New Jersey, everybody's happy, well, this horse went to New Jersey, but I think from Canadians, when the U.S. horses come up here and they can get, Canadian horses can get them beat, you know, mm -hmm. then I think everybody likes that, you know, at least I do. It was great at Hoosier when we had some local, mm -hmm. some local yeah, we, had, yeah. we had three crown winners, yeah. plus Trace, Tietrich won, uh, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, so we had a trainer, we had some owners, we had... Hanalore Hanover, which was Indiana sired, mm -hmm. uh, even though she was trained by you know Ron Burke in New yeah. Jersey. So it was it was a all around Indiana uh, showcase last year. Same thing. We had some a lot of Pennsylvania horses mm -hmm. uh, win. So hopefully, I, I think it's good to show the local so that we can continue to yes. host it. Yes. Right? that's the only way you're going to get fans. Yeah, and we got you know Tall Drink Hanover. Yeah, and we got Best in Show. Yeah, you know the two of the yeah. better ones there. Yeah, right? better and better Swiss too, right? Yeah. Uh, is he, he, you better say? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a, he's Ontario Sire. Right? Yeah. So we got three of the, the you know. Yeah, he didn't compete in any Ontario Sire no. Stakes this no. year because no. he was. He well, started last year. Right. Yeah. 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 With Chantel and he was up here yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can go to who won the Hamilton? Is a Cadabra. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I think our breed up here is is uh, evolved immensely the last say ten years. Yeah. Ever since the cancellation of the slots. Yes. People were, they, they got more selective. Kind of, and you maybe united a little bit more? Well, they just got rid of the bad mares. Okay. Because yeah. everybody, yeah. you know, not everybody, a lot of people just bred mares hoping to throw a little mud at the wall and you oh. get the, you get the resident mare program that earns 15% of all okay. the OSS and 5% for, for sired. Okay. It's 20%. Yeah. I mean, you know what it's going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You get a decent one, it comes out pretty, yeah. you know, at the end of the year. Like Hanover, they claim they get like millions every year, you know, for the Pennsylvania stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, that's that's what it's for. You, you uh, they great the the breeders. I always say about the breeders that uh, that they uh, they sell them and own them too. Yeah, right huh. for two years. Right? But yeah, it's an incentive. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's people. In. When you can get a check at the end of the year, you've sold them as a yearling, and get a check at the end of his two year old and the end of his three year old year. Yeah. That, that's found money, you know, and it just helps you reinvest into a better mare or breed to a better stallion, you know. So we we had I know there was it was a little bit rocky a couple of years ago with uh, what was it called uh, Sharp or Tarp or Sharp. Was, yeah the the Sharp program they, yeah. 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 yeah 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 um, and now it seems to be everything is is on the rise. It's healthy right here in Ontario. Well, it went from here to here. Now yeah. it's back up. Here. Now it's back up here. And I think it made everybody kind of say get their head out of the sand. Okay. And said, A, number one, we should never trust the government in the first place. You know, they will lie. Yeah. You know? So I've never known any politicians ever Well, to lie. I'm going out on the limb there, I guess. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it, and, and I think it just, it, it, my from my perspective, said, get your head out of the sand, let's move on. Either let's get, fit, yeah, get let's, in or get out. If you're going to get in, let's get in in a better way. With yeah, a better mayor, with a better you're, stuff. You're going to have to, because it, this is subsidy. You know? mm -hmm. And it's 17 years. But it's seven years. You're gonna look at it five more years, then five yeah. more years. Sure. So between now and seven years from now, and everybody goes, oh, the, the conservative governor, the Republicans, they, they treat us better and stuff. It's all about money. Sure. And, and all the politicians, the, the only difference in, in any party, one's taller than the other. Yeah. They're all a bunch of lying bastards, right? They'll tell you anything to get get elected, right? Like, dude, we just had an election here last week. Trudeau, who's who's liberal. He uh, he got back in. The first thing he's going to do is lower the taxes on the middle class, and he will, two percent. But he'll add it on someplace else, four oh, percent, right? That's just what they do. Yeah, right? it just doesn't magically appear. It's yeah. stuff has to be yeah, moved, out, moved yeah, around. Yeah, that's all they're doing. And just add, you know, we have an HST here at thirteen percent, but that's your hospitalization stuff, and it and yeah. it works still. It, it's slow, but it, but it really works, and it helps a lot of people that couldn't afford. To be, you know, be treated right. And I think uh, you guys are fully established at Mohawk now. Yeah. New paddock, uh, or a paddock extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Year-round racing. Yeah. So everything, at least that is solid. Looking forward, I know the other tracks have to kind of catch up around, you know, Flamborough and they're some of the gonna, other. They're not going to. They, they're, they're there because they get paid. Sure. Per day, right? They yeah. Turn their lights on, and uh, God knows what what it costs them, but I know what most of them get, and uh, they're there and. As time goes on, the capital improvement money after it's three years that goes away. I mean, it's going to be all. It's going to be tough for some of those places, right? So, you, but you got to have, you got to have a place. You, you need 
a major league. Right? Yeah. And this is it. And that's Mohawk. And, and it's going to be, in, I, the other day I was at the sale and the guy comes over and he says, can't we get like a hitching fee like for people that finish six, seven, eight at the, the B-Tracks? I said, well. You mean like a, a, to, show a trailer off. expenses? Yeah. Yeah, just show right, yeah. fee, right? So I said, well, we did that years ago to try to fill, fill fields. It didn't work. No. They got 300 bucks. And I think the Thorbers give them four or five, you know? I think so. And it didn't work. And I said, well, you know, where would the money come from? We, there's an ex, there's a certain amount of money. We got it all set up. So, in order to do that, you take three hundred dollars. Say you give them two hundred dollars times or three hundred times three. Mm -hmm. That's nine hundred dollars of that purse. Well, now you're gonna fly. Right. So I said it's boiled down to this. Here, here's what it's come to. You make a choice. You're either in or you're out. out. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm here to I'm here to win. Or yeah. I'm, yeah. Or yeah. That's it. Yeah. I think it's come to that. It, point. it, it probably will make the the overall like you said a couple of years ago they cut out some of the mares. Yeah. So maybe so you know so that they weren't breeding, you know sub. So maybe yeah, we'll we'll just have a better product and maybe everything and will it's worked. We'll stay healthy. Really yeah, it's we we got uh, well, we won the Hamiltonian, we won the Melon's Pace. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got some pretty good horses. Got some pretty good horses. So and good sires come back. Sires, so Canada's healthy, Ontario's healthy, Mohawk's healthy. I don't know if it's healthy, but it's yeah, <laughs> Mohawk, Mohawk, yeah. yeah. They they're gonna. I mean, they're, they they got the biggest lobbyist mm -hmm. people and all that stuff. They're gonna. Uh, I think the government will kind of... we got to put on a good breeder's crown. Exactly. So. But Mohawk is a very, in my opinion, very fan-friendly racetrack. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, you're right there. The horses are right there. You're right there. And I think there for a while, if we kind of got, let's hide the horses in the back. Yeah. You know, and bring them Yeah, the paddock is right there. Yeah, the paddock's right, right there. there. They can get a look at it. And they, now they got the televisions on there. And they can watch it. If you're at the track, it's a great experience. Yes. But on TV, it's phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. If, yes. So if you're in wherever yes. you are, Vegas, Florida, yeah. Sweden, it's a phenomenal television product yeah. as well. Yeah. So they're hitting it from both ends yeah. where, you know, no matter where you are, if you're at Mohawk watching it, you're getting a, yeah. a top-notch but, but in saying that, there's nothing like first-hand view. Yeah, if you're there. Oh, you'll yeah. see lots of things that the yeah. guy on television is not going to see. Sure. Although yeah. it's great coverage and yeah. everything, yeah. but if you're there and be part of it, you know, part of the excitement, whether you bet to win or you've got a loser or whatever else you got, if you're there to be part of the excitement, is a major thing for everybody. Okay, last thing you're calling, um, uh, you are my candy girl for an upset. Mm -hmm. What about you? Who's your I, upset? You know, something I, ha I haven't even went over them close enough to, and I'm going to be down there tonight too, but I just never got a program yet to. To get to it, I don't, I don't know. Okay, who? What race are you looking forward to the most? The trots, any of the trots. Okay, I like watching them. That's it. That's that's. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, Ron Waples, Bill O'Donnell. Uh, what's your nickname? I don't think I have one. Cause you're the Magic Man, right? Skinny. Skinny. Yeah, that was Skinny. That was Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Tony so, so, and those days are gone. Yeah, that's me it. Too. All right. Yeah, the Magic is gone too. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you guys. All right.